I was there and we announced that our nonprofit, Citizen Patriot Response, that was uh, also uh, had Andrew Breitbart on the board before he passed away, that we were going to be uh, organizing and doing a lot in communities who are in need. Um, we already have a shelter that we run that sometimes is used for human trafficking victims. Sometimes no one's there. Um, <clears throat> But it's a pretty impressive things that we're going to try to do, and we're going to hope that uh, God allows to happen, you know, and that He blesses. How many of you have ever heard anything about my story personally? Any of you? Few, enough of you. All right, my work with the FBI, <clears throat> predominantly in the realm of international terrorism. Well, <clears throat> about six months ago, I came out. And I announced that I had once again gone undercover with the FBI, but this time I had done so in the realm of human trafficking um, with the Civil Rights Division of the FBI. And what I began to discover <clears throat> was that there were a lot of good men and women in the FBI who cared about human trafficking. And there were a lot of good men and women in all the different law enforcement agencies around who care about human trafficking. And there were a lot of people in Congress and in the state legislature who cared about human trafficking and the concept of um, how many of you would say a 15 to 16 year old girl being kept against her will and used as a, a device to make money for someone as a pimp. How many of you would say that's a horrible, horrible thing? All of us, right? Um, very few people, very few human beings would be okay with that. But it turns out in the state of Texas that happens a lot, often, frequently. And the problems we're facing are that <clears throat> the law enforcement agencies that we trust to stop that kind of thing from occurring around us are not able to do so. And the reason they're not able to do so has nothing to do with the men and women who wear a badge and who hit the street and wear their shoes and their working shoes and, and, and try to stop things, but it has everything to do with the politically appointed leadership that we have chosen. How many of you realize that in the Department of Justice, they say that the, the Whistleblower Protection Act does not apply to them. Any of you aware of that? No. Yeah, so basically, anyone in the Department of Justice, that means the FBI, that means the DEA, that means just across the board, anyone under that umbrella, if they know of corruption or something bad, they can only go to the DOJ under Eric Holder to tell on it. They can't go to Congress. That's the biggest group. No, no, they can't go to Congress. They can't go to the media, they can't go to anyone, and if they do, they lose their pensions. So the agents, the federal agents, who are in a position to know something, all have been with the Bureau or another agency for at least 10 or 15 years. So that's 10 or 15 years of their pension, years of their retirement, that they will not have if they go to Congress and tell on an abuse or a travesty of justice within the DOJ. Now, how many of you realize that there is a program in the FBI, for instance, that used to be called Five Years Up or Out, now it's called Seven Years Up or Out? What that means is that if there is a leader, a person in a supervisory role in the FBI, and they are not promoted by the head of the FBI, Moeller, within five to seven years, they are out. Therefore, the only people in positions of leadership are the people who have pleased and have been deemed loyal to the leadership. Not based upon merit, but based upon who pleases or who that person trusts. This is a problem that we have. So when I worked undercover, we presented, me and some other people I worked with, presented 54 cases to the FBI, with the FBI agents' help, various agents. And one of the leaders, one of the supervisors in the FBI illegally changed evidence and took the word minor off of a source report, which is evidence. It's the witness statement of someone who knows what's occurring. And they took the word minor off because the word minor being on there means that they're required to act immediately. Okay? You follow me so far? It means that they're required to act immediately. They didn't want to act immediately. Why didn't they want to act immediately? Well, here's why. It turns out that the special agent in charge of the entire division, like Austin is in the San Antonio Divi Division, the special agent in charge gets bonuses 
based upon the number of advanced investigative techniques done below him, she, he or she, but it's usually always a he. And so the people in leadership and supervisory roles needing to get promoted, what do they want to do? Well, they want to make sure their boss gets a bonus, and the way he gets a bonus is by using advanced techniques. So when there's something that they think might require an advanced technique like a wire, a wiretap, an eavesdropping warrant, or when there's something like that, and they know it takes longer than 24 hours or it takes time to get permission to do it, then they say, well, let's wait on that and let's see if we can use an advanced technique, therefore making my special agent in charge a bonus, which is a financial bonus, by the way. So you basically have the leadership in the FBI makes more money the more they spy on us with eavesdropping equipment. That's horrible. Well, in this particular case, it was a young girl who was between 15 and 16 years of age that we had presented a case about. And they took the word minor off the report, thus ensuring that she would go through even longer of being raped against her will for the profit of a pimp. Excuse my language, but that's what occurred. And then when they couldn't get the advanced technique warrant, they dropped the case. The agents in the, the matter protested and they found themselves sent other places and in trouble. Which then left me in a position to feel the moral obligation to come forward and tell people about it. And since I've done that, absolutely nothing has occurred. Nothing has changed. Nothing whatsoever. And then the agent that I told on, he called me, even though I've never met him, the supervisor, and left me a threatening voicemail and told me that he knows who I'm texting and calling and that I need to drop the matter and if I have a further problem to contact him in person, not in writing, and he'll resolve the issue. Which I found intimidating, so of course me not wanting to bring uh, scorn upon law enforcement because the left already does that. I decided to handle it internally and go to the DOJ. In which case they said, yeah, he shouldn't have done that, but we're not going to do anything about it. And I said, okay. So it left me in a situation. I also write for Breitbart, so it made me think, well, maybe I'll just release this publicly then. But see, the sad thing is we're in a place where no one cares anymore. Do you remember a few years ago when we found out Van Jones was a communist and we made a big stink and then he had to go? Well, nowadays, if we find out someone's a communist or has radical uh, beliefs and thoughts, it, it seems like they don't even care. They don't even wish. They don't even care what we wish. They don't care what we're worried about. And we didn't lose the election by that much. You know, There's still a substantial amount of Americans who do care, but we're not doing our part. So <clears throat> it leaves me to realize that we have a federal behemoth that we can do nothing about right now. We can try to and we can hold accountable. We can get it on record what they're doing wrong. But ultimately the issue is going to have to fall to the state of Texas. You know, it's going to have to fall to the state of Texas. And what that means is, is we're going to have to hold them accountable and say, in the state of Texas, if you're a person in law enforcement and you know of a child being raped and you do nothing, there are still state laws for you to contend with. Mr. FBI. There are still state laws. We, you cannot, just because you work for the FBI, you cannot allow the abuse of Texan children. You can't. And that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to hold folks accountable. We have plenty of folks dealing with the legislature, trying to do something, trying to get something on the books. But ultimately what it's going to take is when these stories come out, people are going to have to do something about it, tell people about it, pump the information out. Because at the point that I can't do it on Breitbart.com, we have a problem, you know? If you think about it. Yes, sir? I want to address a, a comment to my general over there, General Cosgrave. <laughs> there's, the, there's the mission right there. Brandon just told us about it. <laughs> well, let, let's, let, let's be clear about something. How many of us have an issue with the illegal immigration that's occurring into our state? Raise your hand. Let me put this, how many of us don't? Right, now see, like you, I have no issue with someone being Latino. In fact, one of the most vocal people I know who's on this issue is Latino. You know, referring to me. <laughs> but see, the issue is one of safety, one of economy, one of our nation being a nation of laws. 
But here's the deal, you can yell to the cows come home about it, and no one's seeming to care. Have you noticed that? Yes. So you need to take a different approach. And that approach is, is like Maria is doing, show people the effects of it. And one of the effects of it is the human trafficking issues. In order for liberals, and, and Republican candidates, by the way, Republican politicians, not to have to dirty themselves on border issues, they have to look away from issues of human trafficking. Because you can't address issues of human trafficking and not realize that the porous border is what allows it for the most part. That's the issue. So there's collateral ways to handle some of our problems by just exposing. You can say it to the cows come home that you're not happy about it, about the porous border. Say it to the cows come home, but it's not going to do anything. People have been saying it. You have to expose the cartel violence, which is kind of scary to do. I don't know if you, I write about it and it freaks me out a little bit. Sometimes I get concerned. But you have to expose the violence. You have to expose the war that's going on there. You have to expose the young girls who are victims of that porous border. You know? And especially now, because a lot of the prosecutions for human trafficking, the way the government does it, it's just easier to prosecute those people for other things. So if somebody has a pound of cocaine on them, or, so, or whatever they use, kilos or whatever, if someone has a lot of cocaine on them and they're trafficking girls, they'd rather put them in prison for life for the cocaine because it's an easier prosecution. But now that our nation is starting to lax laws on drugs and narcotics, those people in the cartels aren't going to all of a sudden get born again. Some of them might, and I hope they do, but most of them aren't. They're going to still need money. So what are they making money on? They're making money on drugs, and they're making money on women, on the trafficking of unwilling women into situations where they're being forced to have sex for money in our nation, in our state. That's horrible. That's horrible. So as we lax the laws on drugs, what are they going to do more of to make money? Trafficking, and we have a government that's not in a U.S. Attorney's Office that's no longer geared to prosecute people for human trafficking because they've relied on narcotics. We're going to have this lag period in the federal system where there's no prosecutions and there's no investigations. So it relies back on us as a state. It's us as a state that has to do something. So I'm going to keep writing about the issue, and I'm going to do so on Breitbart.com, and I hope that you follow me and that you care about it. And I hope that you pay attention. Pretty soon you're going to be hearing a lot about a group called Citizen Patriot Response. And I hope that you help me help people. And I hope that, that this narrative that exists, you know, like 80 some odd percent of Democrats say, why are you a Democrat? And they say, because I care about people. And they believe it. And sometimes we give them reason to believe that too, as a movement. We don't do enough. Some of us do a lot, but a lot of us don't. We have to show more that we care, and I hope that you join me in that as well. Thank you very much. Well, Brian, will you take a question? Yes, I'll take questions. Okay. Um, you are an expert in the slavery issue, especially yeah. Not as much as some of the people I work with. And, and even though we're, we may not be an army, we will be sending squads up to the legislature all session. If we could get cogent white papers dealing specifically with these, this issue and the legislation that may or may not be attached or, or being considered up there, it would help us out tremendously to help you out bring this issue up in front of our legislators. Do, do we, is, can you come up with white papers or something? That we I, can I can, yes sir, okay. I can. Thank you very much. What's your web page again? Uh, Breitbart.com yeah. um, is where I work. And you can all contact me. The easiest way to contact me is on Twitter, which is at Brandon Darby, if you're on Twitter. Or you can contact me through Alice. Alice. Um, and uh, get a hold of me, and I'll be happy to work with you. And I'd appreciate any help that you get. We have massive problems, and we're going to have to just work as a movement and figure out ways to deal with it. But our movement, you know, we can talk as much as we want. But, you know, uh, there was a poll released yesterday by Rasmussen. I think it was yesterday or the day before. And it was in the last 48 hours. I'll put it that way. And um, there was a point when, when I think it was 20 some odd percent of all, 23 percent or so of all eligible voters identified with the Tea Party. And the left media took that and took the result of the latest poll and shows that only 8% of eligible voters identify with us. And I looked at that and I was like, only 8%? Like, how many millions of human beings is that? When well, we can do a lot with millions of human beings.